Hello and welcome to the first in a new series of how to use Fantasy Grounds 2 for Savage Worlds Online. This first video has been created thanks to Bill, who asked for us some basic instructions on how to get Fantasy Grounds set up to run your first campaign. So, I've loaded Fantasy Grounds up, uh, it's all up to date, so I'm just going to click Create New Campaign. On the left hand side here it will list any rule sets you've got, so I'll pick Savage Worlds 3, and then any of the extensions I want. In this case I won't worry, I'll just go to Campaign Name and click Demo. And then we just click Start. Once Fantasy Grounds 2 is finished loading, if we were to look in the Application Data folder, you'd find a new campaign that matches the name of the campaign you've created. And if we open that up, you'll find there's an Images folder, a Campaign.xml, and a chat log HTML. This is because well, the newly created campaign hasn't saved any data in there. If we move back to Fancy Grounds and I click slash save all, this will now force Fancy Grounds to make a save of the campaign. If we go back to the folder now, you can see that it's added in a db.xml file. And this is the actual XML file that stores any data, any story entries, and all the shortcut links for any data you create in Fancy Grounds. So the next thing we need to do is decide what modules or rules we're going to allow to be the base level for the campaign. So we go to the modules button, and in this case I'm going to scroll down and add the Swex user guide, players guide I should say, so we'll open that up. Now if I use the tick option, this allows for players, which means the players can open and close it out as well, but I'm actually going to force it to be downloaded to them and opened in their library. Likewise, I'm going to open up the GM guide for myself, but I don't want to allow the players to have access to it, so I'm going to deny them access. So we close that window, look in the library, you can see there's the player guide and the GM guide. Now if I was happening to play Sundered Skies or Slipstream, for example, then I'd also want to add the extra modules in. So I'll go back to the module folder, scroll it down to the bottom for Sundered Skies, open up the player's guide. Again, I'm going to force that to be loaded for the players. Open up the GM's guide and again, stop the players being able to open that. If I close again now, I'll go back to the library. You can now see it's added in the extra rules for the player guide and the GM guide. So the next thing I want to do is add a map to this uh, campaign set. Uh, so I will go to the images tab. Now images are fairly unique in the fact you can add them dynamically mid-game. can prove to be quite useful uh, without having to kick the players off or do any saves. So what I'm going to do is change to my um, images folder. Find a picture. Uh, make a copy of it. Go back to my Fancy Grounds application data folder, go back to my campaign, go to my images folder, paste it in, we'll give it a slightly more meaningful name. And when we go back to Fancy Grounds, you can see it's already added it to images and you can open it up there and then. Tokens can be added in one of two places. You can either add them so when you click on the tokens box they will appear in all rule sets or you can create campaign specific tokens so if we go back to the application data folder go to the fantasy grounds if I go to tokens you've got two folders this is the shared one that will be shared across all rule sets any tokens that are added to the host file only the GM can see when they open the token box any tokens added to the shared folder both the GM and the players can see if you want to make a campaign specific tokens, what you will do is you'll go to your campaign, you'll have to create a new folder called tokens. Oh, spelling's quite important. Called tokens, you can then open that up. Create a new folder called host for GM tokens. And if you want some shared tokens, you can create a folder called shared. Add a couple of tokens in, so I'll just go find some JPEGs, sorry, PNGs in fact. We'll take the Red Knight set from Wonderland, although given that I'm using the uh, 
Sunset Sky Shores, so it's going to be a very strange game. Uh, go back to campaigns, go to demo, go to my tokens folder, go to host, paste them in there. Go back to pictures, and what I'll do is I'll add some player tokens to the shared folder. Demo, tokens, shared, paste that in. Now, if I go back to Fancy Grounds and do a slash reload all, what that will do is uh, force Fancy Grounds to reload the db.xml at the last time it was saved, and then it will go through any other folders and load any changes. And now when we go to Tokens, there will be a new one called Host. And when I open that up, you can see there are the new tokens I've just added. And if I go to Shared, you can see player tokens. Let's tidy up a bit. My first two videos posted on YouTube uh, cover in greater detail the creation of character sheets. Uh, so rather than repeat everything here, I'll just abbreviate. So I've just as a GM, I'll click on PCs. I'll go create item, that'll create a nice blank character sheet and you can populate it. Conversely, the players can connect to you and create a character sheet. Likewise, uh, Bill's last request is how to run combats. I've released three combat tracker videos on YouTube. Um, the first two go into the combat tracker in great detail. The third video uh, shows a session of last night's combat just one round. Um, just to give you a basic idea. I hope this has proved useful to you, Bill. Any more questions, please feel free to ask. And indeed, anyone else who views this, uh, any questions you have about playing Savage Worlds Online using Fantasy Grounds 2, if you'll post them at savageworldsonline.net, I'll uh, get round to answering them as quickly as I can. I hope you found this useful. Thank you. Goodbye.